making friends, guys. I always like to wear my most fancy skirt when I go toilet paper shopping. I don't know about you. Oh, husband, where are you? Today on Montana Dana, I put on my fanciest skirt, strap up my fanciest heels, and walk myself downtown to try and meet people. I go to not one, not two, but three local establishments and may or may not make some new friends. Give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more lifestyle shenanigans. Good morning, my beautiful and lovely friends. So since I just moved into a new apartment, for the next 30 days, I am kind of forcing myself to get out and about, make new friends, meet new people, and just kind of find my tribe here in St. George. Also, I already have some friends here, so I'm gonna meet up with them as well. But I made a list of things to do over the next 30 days. Go to a gym instead of work out at home, go out to a bar, go play pickleball, go do a hike with friends, stuff like that. I just, I'm making a big effort to get out and be a little more social, because I'm definitely an introvert, definitely comfortable just hanging out in my place all day long and I turn 41 in two months and I want babies so I actually think I'm gonna have to start trying at this whole dating thing most of my life I've been on the it will happen when it happens it will happen when you least expect it train well it hasn't happened so I'm gonna get off that damn train and I'm gonna make some shit happen so let's go back to this morning when I got in some exercise good morning from the bike path getting out again minutes this morning. I was gonna pretend I still lived in Los Angeles and go full swimsuit. But I don't know, I don't know if Utah can handle full swimsuit, butt cheeks in the wind at 7 a.m. I just don't know. I don't think Utah is ready. Stop it right now. Is the road unblocked? Could it be? It's almost there. I love this spot right here. It's so pretty. <laughs> degrees outside that's why I'm rollerblading first thing so the videos will probably go up a little bit later every day I run into bike path crush one more time we stopped hanging out like six days ago and I've seen him three or four times <laughs> what the hell to grass or not to grass is the question. I think I'm gonna go do some grounding in the water today. Oh, this is so peaceful. It feels so good. I was always a little iffy to get in the Virgin River because when you look on the Springdale website, the National Parks website, there's often bacteria in these waters, but it's flowing. So also never realized there was a froth course over here. That is quite fun. Or disc, disc golf, whatever people call it these days. I don't know. I do have three discs. Hi, it's editing, Dana. I have been looking for my three discs and I think my discs are in the abyss. I don't know if you've ever had abyss discs, but hello, hello, hello. Where are you? Are you? Are you? Or did I put them? I think I, I think I put them in this closet, but yeah. The Abysk discs are an adventure for another day. Okay, back to the Virgin River. Is that where I'm going to run into my future husband? Playing disc golf by myself in Southern Utah? Is that how it happens? Oh my gosh, this is a vibe though. This is very good. I like being in the water better than I like being in grass, which is odd because I'm not a huge water person, but I just like being able to like dig my feet down. And I'm also, someone mentioned that there's like chemicals in the grass, which I know they spray to keep the grass green typically. And I don't know if I want to be absorbing all those chemicals into my feet. So I'll probably be doing the water grounding from now on. There's a little waterfall up there. It's just like really peaceful. You know, peaceful and everything. Just kidding. Do you need help though, for real? No, she doesn't need help. Morning sun, you open up the possibilities. Morning sun, shine your light on in me. Even on my dark days, even on my heart. Making me feel brand new. Out 
outfit of the day. We're going hippie chic. I love dress season so much. Summertime, ah, it feels good to be in my feminine today. I've been in such a masculine energy, which I like playing with my masculine energy. I have quite a bit of masculine energy. I'm very much like get her done athletic and I'm just very like a busy person but I also love to twirl you know it's very much that Ooh, maybe I'm gonna wear a hat today is this a vibe I like I think this might be a vibe I think it's a vibe I might actually do my makeup today too I'm starting to feel like me again I told you I was basic Utah I was not joking I've had so many people share that link with me about the big dumb hats I'm like yes I that is me I do not own a Stanley cup but I do wear all the big hats but anyway, this is my vibe today. You just won't look over here. I bought some new flowers yesterday and I'm really feeling them. They're like a peachy, pinky color. I did my nails last night, found all my instruments and I'm excited to do some more creative stuff. But since I'm doing daily videos, I'm going to sit here for the next four hours and finish yesterday's vlog edit, probably go out for some sun, and by the time I get back, it's always about 3 p.m. That's my morning. A lot of times I will come home and do red light therapy. I'm not going to do that today because I have got to get this vlog up. I spent a little too much time at the river just hanging out. Gonna get to work and I'll catch up with you guys later on. But there's something so freeing about just owning who you are and not trying to fit into any sort of mold like the more I learn, the less I know, but what I have discovered is people don't really care that much about your experience. They're more invested in their own experience and their view of you is a direct reflection of them and their beliefs and their values. If you spend all your time trying to fit a mold, instead of just being yourself, you're going to attract people who want you to continue perpetuating that mold that you're trying to fit into. But if you're just yourself, then you will attract the people that like you as yourself. It's quite lovely, really. And your sense of self can shift and change over time. But I spent a lot of my younger years trying to hide my femininity to fit in. And I spent a lot of my 20s try being overly feminine and trying to hide my more masculine traits to fit in and to be attractive. Now I just don't give a fuck. I'm just like, I am what I am. I like to lift heavy shit. I'm a very capable human being, but I prefer to be in my feminine. So I'm gonna put more of my feminine out there. Speaking of feminine. Oh my gosh, what a vibe. It's more about balancing those energies within ourself rather than finding another person to balance our energies. Like sometimes I'm too much in my feminine where I'm just whimsical and everything's going to be okay. And that's when I need to put some boundaries for myself like no you need to wake up and get to the gym and get things done and then you can play and sometimes i'm too much in my masculine where i'm just in my head i'm i'm kind of on robot mode where i just get shit done and then i start to feel a lack of balance that way so i think within ourselves we need to balance our masculine and feminine energies and then also in relationships we need to balance our feminine and masculine energies there's so much hype online about being alpha and masculine and being feminine we both have both in us i am more about balance being a balanced person there is feminine that's very toxic and unhealed and then there's feminine that is strong and then there's the same with masculine there is unhealed wounded masculine toxic masculinity and then there is strength handling adversity that kind of masculine anyway i don't even know what i'm talking about am i just avoiding editing yesterday's video <gasps> i would never okay i'm going to be sipping on some berry and aloe iced tea i am super dehydrated lately even drinking a lot of water it is so hot here. Every time I walk outside, I'm sweating and I love it. I love the heat so much, but definitely keeping hydrated. It also keeps your skin nice and plump and looking and feeling good. Also, I'm in the sun a lot, so my skin is just like more dry and leathery. One thing I've been using though that has transformed my skin and made it super soft is I've been getting the cleanest body lotion I can find unscented, all that. And then I add some drops of vitamin E oil into my lotion and then massage it in and my skin is so soft. 
I used to use Jergens because it made my skin feel so nice, but there's a lot of like nasty stuff in it. So I'll link below the vitamin E oil that I've been using to drop into my lotion. I think the, the lotion I've been using is CeraVe. It's like paraben sulfate free but recently i bought an even cleaner one that's just shea butter coconut oil and something else and i put that on at night it's super greasy but makes my skin feel so buttery smooth my face isn't melting off your face is melting off i don't know what you're talking about get my buns in the sun feels so good i love summertime even when it's 105 degrees i will lay out here i am that crazy if you made it this far in the video, tell me whether you are a summer, a winter, a fall, or a spring type of person. I am so much a summer person. I just need to be outside. But I'm not like a Florida summer person. I don't do humidity. I need to be outside. So I can handle spring and I can handle fall. And I can handle like going up to ski for a weekend. But I do not love winter. No, I do not. We're just doing a little 20 minutes on the front, 20 minutes on the back, and that's plenty of sun for today and for tomorrow. I like to rotisserie chicken myself and flip around every 15 minutes or so, but we're doing a full 20 on each side. Well, that's my tanning story, and I'm sticking to it. Okay, so I'm officially having the weirdest lunch ever. This is my chicken sink bowl. We've got leftover buffalo. We've got a hot dog sausage sort of thing leftover cucumber onion coleslaw and avocado because why not i just need to get rid of stuff in my fridge before i buy new groceries i think i'm gonna go on a costco haul this week but i'm thinking i am gonna go out tonight to one of the local places here it's called the hive and there's live music and i'll go in and talk to the owner or see if the owner is there see if i can set up a gig i think that will be fun and then i just kind of want to scope out the scene maybe meet some new friends we'll see what i do know is i need to get out of my comfort zone and meet some people and find my tribe am i going to find that at the hive tonight not necessarily but i'm gonna go and check it out. I might even put makeup on. I don't know, it's about to get wild and crazy. Now, do I want to eat cat soup over my beautiful skirt? Hmm. Mm -mm. Nope, not doing that. No, ma'am. That's better. So I just posted my video and yesterday I asked you guys, are you single or are you with somebody? And if you're with somebody, where did you meet? Cause I need some ideas. So Dallas, says, I met my man 15 years ago at my work, which was also a bar. So she met her husband at a bar, okay. He was one of the regulars and I was a bartender. Okay, cool. Ruth says she was married to her hubs for almost 35 years, met when he and I worked together and we were with other people at the time. A couple years later, we were both single and the rest is history. Oh, that's cute. So people are meeting people at work. I work at home, so that doesn't help, but I think that's a cute story. That's cute. Maybe I should get a little part-time job somewhere. I made a promise to myself that I would never ever work in the food industry again though, so I don't know about working at a bar or something like that, but maybe going out and playing, that's kind of a gig. Like maybe I'll get some gigs around here and then I'll at least meet people who are into chicks who sing and stuff. So that's cool. Betty, hi Betty. I met Hank at Circle K. Are you serious? Oh my gosh, I need to text you. I did not know. I need more of that info. She says if she has anything of value to share with anyone, it would be that things are worth fighting for, but nothing is worth fighting over. Ooh, Betty coming in hot with the advice. In 30 years of marriage, we have not had a fight. We have disagreed absolutely a lot, but we just chose not to fight over it. I love that. I think that's really, really great. I think like it shows a lot of emotional maturity when you can disagree with someone, just be like, okay, that's a different perspective from mine. That's harder for me when I feel personally attacked. I, I'm not gonna lie, but, but I guess you shouldn't be with someone who personally attacks you, I guess is the moral of that story. Sunflowers36 met her husband on a dating site at age 50. That's cool. So I'm talking to a couple people on dating websites. It's not my favorite thing, but hey, I'm pretty Participating. Liz met her man on a Facebook dating app. Facebook has a dating app? Liz, tell me more. Liz is always in the comments. Hey girl, love seeing you pop up. I noticed, like, I feel like I'm getting to know you guys. A lot of you post every single day and I appreciate it and I always see you coming back. What about meeting a guy at CrossFit? or maybe a spiritual based church? What's a spiritual based church? Like I'm spiritual, but I'm not 
Christian. So where are those churches? I don't know. Is that just called like, is that called an ayahuasca ceremony? I don't know. I really don't know. LKE or IKE, Ike4907, says she's single and happy about it. Get it, Queen. I wish I could be just single and like fulfilled. I can be single and happy. I cannot be single and fulfilled. I want to have a family. And most importantly, I want to have a partner that I can do life with. I just have very high standards of a partner and I'm willing to bring that to the table. So I feel like I can have high standards if I'm also providing those same things. Who else? Let's see. Chopper345 says, trust and communication is key to great relationships. Also met him in grade school, but we are not together anymore and not sure where to meet people. Hope you have a great day. Hope you have a great day too. Meeting in grade school, wowzer. That's crazy. Sweet baby girl, 1979, who is also a very frequent OG follower. Hey queen. Uh, she says, no, you don't want to meet a man at the bar. It's not your scene. Met my hubby of 12 years online. Plenty of fish. Oh, I've never tried plenty of fish. It was a while before I found a good one. Yeah. I'm only on Bumble. I tried OkCupid here, but OkCupid was great in LA. It's not so good here in St. George. Just not as many people are on it. But with Bumble, the woman has to like reach out first, which I don't know. I just, I want the man to kind of pursue. I guess it's the like, you drop your pencil and be like, what? and then the guy comes and picks it up. I don't know, I don't like the game. I just, I cannot with the dating games. I just, I cannot. I just want someone to eat buffalo burgers and sausages with. Is that too much to ask? I do not want to play the game. I just want to go outdoors and enjoy my life with somebody. And if we happen to make a couple of adorable human beings, then so be it. But yes, I've always had the attitude, if you stop trying, it will happen. Once you stop looking for it, it will appear. That has been my attitude the last 20 years. I've never really looked for a relationship. It just happened through meeting friends. So I think I'll be single in 50 if I keep that attitude. It doesn't always happen when you stop looking. It truly does not. That has been the last 20 years of my life. I have never intentionally gone out, put myself out there and been like, hey, I want a relationship right now. I've always been open to it, but I'm actually gonna try because I'm almost 41 and I kind of have to if I want a family. So my old way of thinking has not been working for me. So I'm going to have to try something new. I found one more good comment. Russell Family Funny Farm. She says, I met my husband at a bar at age 24. So maybe I should go to the bar. Been together 20 years, but we met there with mutual friends. Yeah. I was leery of bar guys too, but he was there to see a Brett Michaels show. Yeah. So like, I think all sorts of people go to a bar. It's not just like alcoholics that hang out at bars. Friends meet up with friends for a drink. Like you never know. And then Christy Wood met her husband at the Cracker Barrel. You mean all this time I've been sleeping in Cracker Barrel parking lots and I've never met my husband. What in the heck? I'll read the rest of your message in a minute, Christy. Someone else said, second marriage, way better than the first. I had no idea where to meet my man of my dreams as my first marriage was who I dated from high school. So 14 years later had no clue where to go. I was told to pray for my future husband, so I did. I got on Tinder with my sister, more for fun, just laughing, laughing, swipe left, swipe right. Found him. Did I have avocado in my tooth that whole time? I'm so embarrassed. I should probably get embarrassed a little more easy. I'd probably put a lot of less stupid things on the internet. I just ran completely out of fun. Between the ages of 29 and 35, I don't know what happened. I had so many of them and they just packed up their shit and went on a permanent vacation. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, one more, sorry. Mandy met her husband of 11 years in a bar. She was the bartender and she says he doesn't drink. So we laugh about that now. Okay, maybe I'll go say hello to a bartender. Who knows? I've also heard that a great place to meet a significant other is at the grocery store. So I'm actually, Gonna walk and get myself a beverage. I've been on the coconut water train lately, mainly because they're on sale. I feel so good starting out the day with working out. It mentally makes me feel so good. Cause when I'm constantly thinking about like, oh, do I need to go to the gym later? Oh, I haven't got my steps in. Like I got my steps in by 10 AM and it just mentally frees me up for the rest of the day. The next 30 days, I am getting myself out there more. It's not that I have to find a husband at the end of 30 days. 
it's more of a social experiment just to see what happens. Like the more men I meet and the more friends I meet, the more likely I am to find someone who fits my specific needs and personality and whatnot. It literally feels like you're blasted with a heater when you walk outside. wear my most fancy skirt when I go toilet paper shopping. I don't know about you. Oh, husband, where are you? Okay, I'm just cooling off and wanted to read one more comment. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put my makeup on in a minute but I need to stop sweating first. It's so hot outside. Michelle said she wrote down exactly what she wants in a partner, wrapped it in red flower paper. What is red flower paper? I want some. And put it in a container on my dresser. I let time pass and had horrible dates with men I met on the apps. When I least expected it, a coworker asked me out. We had been friends at work for two years and we developed the very best relationship Oh, he passed away last August. But he was my person and my soulmate. Oh my gosh, that's so sad. I showed my daughters the container and read what I had written and we all agreed. Bill had every quality I'd asked for the universe for. Stop looking and he will find you. See, people keep saying stop looking and he will find you, but that's been my attitude for 20 years. Literally, I've never actually gone out looking for a man. Kamachi Mi Leonish, I have no idea what your username is, but they say, is there any kind of rollerblading community in St. George? I wish. Maybe a good way to get out there and meet people isn't the bar scene. I agree. Angie says, my hubby and I met at work. He owned a business next to the office I worked in. He came in flirting with my coworker until he found out she was married. She told him he should ask me out. <laughs> he was so handsome and I was so embarrassed, lol. Together 23, years married 17 oh that's awesome and her best piece of advice is don't stop dating each other i love that make an effort to court your person and like the amount of effort i put in a beginning of a relationship should be the amount of effort i put like after a long term like wanting to look cute and just pr just showing up as your best self but lately i've been on a i don't know i've been attracting really superficial people so i'm like i'm just gonna go grungy af and they're just gonna have to like me for me but that didn't necessarily work either so i don't know i don't know what the answer is but i do know i'm gonna put some makeup on and look cute and feel good tonight and maybe go get a couple singing gigs maris life says she's been married 41 years he had to be hard working respectful respect women and be funny with good communication. I mean, that is the dream, right? That is the dream. I just thought all men were like that. I really did and they're they're not. No, mm -mm, no, they most certainly are not. Okay, last comment I'm gonna read, then I'm gonna go get ready. Linda suggests using my singing and songwriting to meet people, get a job performing. Yes, I totally agree. Um, Linda remarried in 1995 after divorcing the father of her children. After 26 years, she met someone humorous, someone she could talk to about anything, and he was very loving and affectionate. He didn't make anywhere close to the money of her first husband, but made her realize that money doesn't guarantee happiness in marriage. She says, my second husband and I just celebrated 29 years and he's my best friend. He never had children, but my kids did, and he got experience of having babies through adults because he volunteered to babysit over weekends and vacations. Oh, that's so sweet. I love when people find their people. It's so sweet. Laurie's daughter met her person on an online dating site. A dating scene in Southern Idaho is trash, lol. I'm 43 and it's a train wreck. <laughs> Have you ever thought of IVF to have a child? Y yes. I also am looking into freezing my eggs. I think it's probably a smart choice at this point. Anyway, enough about my bodily functions. All right, makeup is on. We're doing half tranche lashes. It also saves money because I get the ones that taper on each end. So if you cut them in the middle, that actually turns into two lashes. But I'm gonna get dressed. It's only 4.30, so I don't think it's necessarily the best time to go to a bar, but I'm gonna hit up multiple places. So I'll just start editing today's video for the next hour or so, and then let's go out and socialize. <laughs> <sighs> it has been so long since I wore earrings. I'm basically piercing my ears right now. Oh.
my holes have closed up that's how long it's been since i have been laid just kidding i'm talking about my earring holes how ah, okay we made it we made it i'm going full on hippie vibes tonight like i'm trying to get a singing gig so i think like feathery hippie earrings are the way to go she is boho chic she is here for your entertainment Ooh, i don't i don't know that's a lot i went from zero to this that's a lot of earring i'll put on the outfit and then we'll see and also i am five foot nine without heels and i'm definitely wearing these tonight <laughs> if he can't have me at mammoth he does not deserve me at petite okay okay kevin Hey, Kev. Kevin, I'm gonna go out with the girls. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go out with the girls. Don't wait up. Ooh, whoa, whoa, that's a good four inches. That's what she said. Kevin, why am I dressed like this? I'm going out with my ladies. Why don't I ever dress up for you? When have you ever taken me out, Kev? The only thing I ever see you in is your workout shorts. Every night you come home sweaty from the gym. You don't bathe. Why don't I ever dress up for you? When have you ever dressed up for me, Kevin? For the love of St. Pete. On today's episode of Worst Couple Ever. So I figured out the character's name, the, the character I go into who dates Kevin. Her name is Lynn. Her pronoun is Mascu. Her name is Masculine. She's become a masculine woman because she has a lazy ass boyfriend. And she's like a hardcore feminist and he's hardcore into red pill theory. And it's just like a disaster waiting to happen. I think that's hilarious. Those are my new characters. But anyway, I'm back to Dana now. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna edit and then let's go do something social. Do we like the heels? Is it, am I too tall? I'm probably six foot one right now. I once dated a man who was five foot six and it wasn't a big thing. He was wider than me. He was my short king. It was it was just fine. He was taller than me when we were horizontal. I'll tell you that. <laughs> okay, anywho. I don't know, what do we think about this outfit though, for real? I'm so nervous. I feel like I have a first date when I don't even have a first date. But I think it's cute. I gave myself a little pedicure last night. So I've got like French tips, feeling good. No bra, no problem. My hair covers it. It's gonna be just fine. It's gonna be okay. I'm not getting boob cancer so you guys can you feel like I'm politically correct. Okay, thank you so very much. By the way, uh, my ride does not match my vibe. I am laughing at the thought of showing up in my suburban towing a trailer. All right, I decided against the heels mainly because my feet started falling asleep just sitting there editing and I want to, I don't want to have sore feet tomorrow, so. We're going to instead go with a half inch heeled flippy floppy. Oh, that's way more comfortable. Who knew? I do love a fun pair of heels. Like if I was gonna go out in Vegas, I'd wear those, but Thursday night, trying to get a gig. I don't know if we really need six inch heels. And away we go. Did you guys know that I not only have one abyss, I have two abysses. I have straight abyss eye happening in my life right now. My abyss just has items in it that still need to be sorted. I have no idea what's back there. Hangers, a really pretty bag my stepmom got me a long time ago. Wanna keep that. It's very cute. I have no idea. That's what's so fun about the abyss. It's like Christmas when you clean out your abyss. I really don't know what I'm gonna do with my life because I'm gonna go in and ask if they have live music and they're gonna be like, yep. And then I'm just gonna sit there and order water with lemon. What do I do? I love going out to bars with my friends, but I never drink. So if they act drunk, it gives me a green light to like act like myself and I can just be my full on crazy and it's great fun. First stop is a place called The Hive. I know they have live music, so we're gonna go there first. Ooh, pretty flowers. All right, we're heading in, we're doing this. Hello, kind sir. Okay, so I just felt like an idiot just sitting there. I'm not just gonna go, go to a bar and sip water. But the host guy was hot. Hello, he's probably 30 though. 
I think with men, my eyes are younger than my stomach, if you know what I mean. I can't tell how old people are if they're over like, if they're over like 22 to like 40, I cannot tell how old they are. I'm gonna go in George's. It's like a little local spot. See if they do any live music. I did email the booking person though, Liz, so hopefully she'll get back to me and I can book a gig or two at the Hive. They said that they're booked out for like months in advance, but now that I live here, I don't have to worry about that. I can book something months in advance. There's also the Feel Love Cafe. I wonder, I have a very like coffee shop vibe with my music. I wonder if they do live music, I'll go ask. I'm definitely more of a coffee shop vibe person than a bar vibe person. So yeah, let's go to Feel Love first. They are definitely closed. Shoot. Well, I have to remember to come back here and ask because it is such a cute vibe in there. Like, look at these little tables. That's actually where Skylar and I had our first date, right at that table. So yeah, we'll come back to Feel Love. Let's go into charges. Okay, so I met Dave. He's about to perform. I got some numbers to contact about performing, but he doesn't play for another half hour, so I'm gonna walk around and see if there's any other places that have live music. There's this old fire station that they turned into a bar. I don't think they do live music, but we'll go ask. Why not? Okay, so they have live music. I emailed the lady. They must card a literal everyone that walks in there because being 40 and still being carded, I don't know, but it feels pretty good. I still have some time to kill, so I might pop into, oh, spiritual. I forgot about spiritual. I was gonna say I'll pop into Benji's and get some Thai curry. Yes, please. They do not have live music there, but I met John the bartender, he's super cool. He's my new friend, he is engaged, but he lived in LA for the last 10 years, so we talked for quite a while. It's cool to meet someone who has similar experience of, of Utah and California and all that, so it's kind of cool. I'm making friends, guys. I think I'm gonna order some food at George's because I wanna go listen to live music and I don't wanna just sit there and drink water. <laughs> I'm gonna watch Dave play and get a mocktail. Go Dave! So I stayed and watched Dave play for about, oh, 45 minutes. I just like supporting local musicians. Dave is dedicating a song to me. How cute. And you can't really hear what I was saying here, but at George's, they don't have a license to play cover songs, so they want someone who can play all originals, which is good for me, so hopefully I can get a gig here. I think it would be super fun. So I sat at the bar and ordered a mocktail. I got the local lavender lemonade and asked for it without sugar, but it's pre-made, so they couldn't, and it was just way too sweet to even drink. I got diabetes just having one sip of this damn drink. So I just poured some of it into my water and drink it that way. All right, I met Dave over at George's. I met Ian over at the Zion Brewery. And I met John over at, I forget what it's called. The really fancy LA type bar. I'm making friends, guys, and I might be setting up some gigs. I sent off three emails, so fingers crossed. That was a pretty successful adventure. It's eight o'clock. I'm gonna go home and eat some food. I met many different men. It was a very exciting time out. Looking good, looking healthy. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing with my life. I'm just trying to get out and about to make friends. Hello, friends. I've been editing ever since I got home. It is now 11.15. My ear holes hurt very, very much. But if you made it this far in the video, I would like one of you to pick the word and I'll pin it at the top and then everybody use that word in a sentence Ooh. and i will probably not write you back because uh, doing daily vlogs and editing for someone else is a lot of work every day so i try though i try if you like this video give it a thumbs up if you loved it share it with your friends if you want to watch another video of mine there's an option right here make sure you're subscribed and 
If you want to donate to the channel, you can do so on Venmo or PayPal. There are links down in the description. See you next time.